for more videos press the subscribe button and also turn on the bell notifications to receive the updates directly in your device hello friends i vikas nehra welcome you all to our nehra classes youtube channel in today's tutorial we will learn how to install and manage the kernel based virtual machines in centos 8 or in rhl 8 but before i show you how to install the kvm there you must know what is kvm and why do we use it actually kvm or the kernel based virtual machine is an open source de facto standard virtualization solution that is tightly integrated into linux it is a loadable kernel module that turns linux into type 1 or the bare metal hypervisor that creates a virtual operating system platform used to run the virtual machines under kvm each virtual machine is a linux process that is scheduled and managed by the linux kernel and has private virtualized hardware like cpu network card disks etc it also supports nested virtualization which allows you to run a virtual machine inside another virtual machine and some of the key features of kvm include support for a wide range of linux supported hardware platforms like x86 hardware with virtualization extensions like intel vt or amd v it provides enhanced vm security and isolation using both se linux and secure virtualization as built it inherits kernel memory management features and it supports both offline and real time migrations so without wasting time let's get started with the installation of kvm so there are some pre requests which we need to fulfill before we install the kvm in our machine so we should have a machine that should be running on centos 8 or on rhl 8 if we are using rhl 8 an active red hat subscription must be enabled in our machine and additionally we have to make sure that our hardware platform supports virtualization so i already have two templates in my vmware workstation rhl 8 and centos 8 and we are going to use centos 8 only because there we would not require the red hat subscription so i'm going to clone this machine to create another virtual machine which we are going to use for the kvm so i will go on this machine settings and simply i will click on manage and then i will select clone here and i will click on next next then i will select create a full clone i will click on next and i will click on finish so this will create another clone of this template which we are going to use to install the kvm so you can see that our machine is ready now and we will go to the settings of this machine and here we will make sure that this machine has sufficient hardware resources to run the kvm to run a single virtual machine there it should ideally have more than 4 gb of memory currently we are using 8 gb so the ram is okay now we will go on processors and we will make sure that it should at least have two processors there and we are using two processors and two cores per processor so in total there are four cores present after that you have to make sure that the virtualization engine option must be enabled here in the processors so you have to tick this check box virtualize intel vt or amd v otherwise you will not be able to install the kvm there after that we will go on the network adapter and we will make sure that the network connection is bridge only so we will select the bridged network adapter and click on okay after that we will power on the machine and once our machine would be ready we will log in in the machine through ssh and we will execute some commands to install and configure the kvm there so our machine is booting up and within few seconds it should be ready so you can see that our machine is ready now we are going to log in in this machine as the root user and first of all we will check the ip address of this machine so that we can remotely log in through ssh in this machine so i will open the terminal there and on terminal i will execute the ipa command so the ip address of this machine is 192.168.1.238 
So with the help of this IP address, we will log in in this machine through SSH using MOBA XTERM. So I just logged in from MOBA XTERM in our machine. Let me increase the font size. Now, since we are logged in as the root user through MOBA XTERM, first of all, we will check whether our machine supports the virtualization or not. And for that, on Intel systems, we have to execute this command grep hyphen e vmx and we will check it in slash proc slash cpu info and on amd machines we have to execute this one since my machine is running on amd so i will execute grep hyphen e svm so it should show you the output like this it should show you the result as svm svm that means this machine supports the virtualization now in the next step we will execute ls mode and there we will grab kvm and here also it should show you the output like this so that means the virtualization is enabled on this machine now in the next step we will install the cockpit web console in our machine and for that we will execute the dnf install cockpit command and before that you have to make sure that the repositories are already enabled in your system if you don't know how to configure the repositories, you can watch my videos. I will provide you the link of those videos in the description as well as in the i button. But in case if you are using CentOS or if you have the Red Hat subscription, you don't need to manually configure the repositories there. They are automatically configured. So you can see that cockpit packages are installed in our machine. Now we will start and enable the cockpit.socket service. This will allow us to use the cockpit web console so you can see that i have successfully started the cockpit service now i will enable the same so that it can run at its own on rebooting the machine and we will also verify the status of the same by running the system ctl status command and here you can see that the service is up and running fine now we can proceed further now in the next step we have to make sure that the cockpit service is already added in the firewall. If not, we can execute this command. If we do the installation in GUI mode, by default, the cockpit service is added in the firewall. You can see that it is already enabled. And to implement the changes in the firewall, we have to execute firewall-cmd-reload command. Now we are good to proceed further. Now in the next step, we can access our machine from the web browser using the cockpit. So let me check the IP address of machine and the IP address of this machine is 192.168.1.238. Now we will open any web browser. There we will mention this IP address along with the port number 9090. So it will allow us to log in in the cockpit. After that, if it prompt you, you have to click on advance and click on proceed and here in the username field you can mention root and in the password field you can mention the root password so here we are in the cockpit utility and from here we can not only manage the host machine but the kvm as well and if we want to execute the commands we can also execute the commands from the terminal so with this terminal we can execute the commands as well now let's go back to our mobile xtrm terminal and here we will execute the commands to install the kvm packages so first of all we have to install the virtualization module and the other virtualization packages so first we will install the virtualization module using the dnf module install command so we will execute the dnf module install vid command here don't worry about the commands and the steps i will provide you each and everything in the description of the video so you can copy these steps and commands from the description so the vid module is installed. Now in the next step, we will install the vid install and vid viewer packages in our machine. So we can execute the dnf install command for the same. And this will help us in installing the vid install and vid viewer packages for managing the KVM. Now in the next step, we will run the vid-host-validate command to validate if the host machine is set up to run the live with hypervisor drivers so let's execute this one so it looks good now we can proceed further now in the next step we have to start and enable the 
live with d daemon for the kvm so this is the important service that is used to manage the kvms so we have started the service live with d now we will enable the same to set it at the boot time now it will auto start at its own on rebooting the machine now we will verify the status of the same by running the system ctl status command and here you can see that the service is enabled and running fine after that we will go to the cockpit web console and we will click on the networking tab and there we will click on the add bridge option and here we will select the ens33 which is the default ethernet interface and we will click on apply so this will add the bridge network adapter in our system and here you can see the status of the same after that we can easily create the virtual machine with the help of the cockpit web console or in case if you want to use the commands you can use the commands as well but using the cockpit interface would be easy so you should always go for this one if you are using rhl 8 or centos 8 while in case of rhl 7 we do everything with the help of commands so let's click on the virtual machines tab inside virtual machines tab two options are available to us create vm and import vm if we click on create vm so here either we can download the iso image with the help of the internet connection so for that we can choose the download and os or in case if we have the iso image locally present we can select the local install media option or we can also mention the url of the iso image and in case if we want to do the kickstart installation we can also select network boot or the pxe option so out of these four we can use any of the options we will go for the second one since we have the iso image locally present and in case if you want to import the virtual machine from any other directory you can choose the second one and here you have to mention the name of the operating system then the then you have to specify the disk image path here and after that you have to select the operating system from here and after that you can specify the memory and you can import the vm so we will go for the first one that is create vm and we will use the local iso image for that so let me copy the ubuntu iso image in our machine using sftp so i will go to mobile xterm i will go to sftp i will go to the tmp directory and there i will click on upload to the current folder and there i will select the iso image of ubuntu so this is the iso image of ubuntu 20.04 and you can see that it is getting copied in the tmp directory of our host machine so you can see that it is almost done yes the image is successfully copied so let's go to the tmp directory and let's execute the ls command so you can see that ubuntu 20.04 iso image is present so first i'm going to rename it and i will rename it as ubuntu.is only after that i will change the permissions so i will mention the permissions as 755 after that we will go to the cockpit web console there we will click on virtual machines tab and after that we will click there on create vm here in the name field we will mention the name of the virtual machine as ubuntu then we will select the installation type so here we will choose the second option that is local install media after that we have to mention the installation source so here we will mention the path so we will write here slash tmp slash ubuntu dot iso after that it will automatically select the operating system that is ubuntu 20.04 then storage we will use create new volume then we have to select the size of the disk so i can mention here 9 gb after that we have to select the memory let me use 4 gb ram here and after that we have to make sure that this checkbox is already ticked immediately start vm and we can click on create so it will create the kvm there in our host machine 
and if we click here on the name we can see the details and here you are able to see the vnc console of the same so you can see that currently it is checking the disk and after that it will guide us for the installation of ubuntu in our centos 8 so you can see that it is booting from the iso image now we can easily do the installation with the help of gui so we will select install ubuntu and press enter here then we have to select the keyboard layout so you can select your desired keyboard layout here with the help of arrow keys then you have to click on continue after that you can select the normal installation or minimal we will go for the normal installation and let me untick this checkbox i don't want to install the updates right now i will click on continue so everything you have to do with the help of the arrow keys and the tab key here then we will go with the first option that is erase disk and install ubuntu and we will click on install now button so it will automatically erase the disk and install the ubuntu and it will automatically create all the required file systems like root boot and swap there and this process will take some time so it can take up to 30 minutes depending on the capacity of your machine and the host operating system resources after that you have to select your time zone and click on continue and here you can mention the username let me mention the username as vikas nehra and let me define the password as well and i will click on continue and press enter so it is currently copying the files from the iso image and this process will definitely take some time so you need to keep patience here you need to wait for at least 10 to 15 minutes or it can take up to 30 minutes depending on the capacity of your machine and the hardware resources that are using in your host operating system so i'm going to fast forward this video for you and i'll show you the process once it is done Now before restarting the machine we have to remove the ISO image so we will click here on remove so the disk is now removed and we will also verify the network adapter it should have the same bridge network adapter that we created earlier and after that we can force reboot the machine so now our machine is booting up from the hard drive so you can see that our machine is ready now let's login in the machine as the vikas nara user so with the help of the tab key we will select vikas nara and press enter and we will specify the same password here which we have mentioned while installing it here it is now we can open terminal here So in case if you want to use the terminal there in your KVM, you have to use this send key option. You have to click here on the drop down menu and you have to select control plus alt plus F4. And it will help you to open the terminal there and you can execute the commands. Now in case if you want to use the SSH, you can execute sudo apt install ssh command press enter after that it will prompt you for the password you have to mention your own password for the user account and press enter again so it will download and install the packages for the ssh now we can start the service by running sudo systemctl start command now we can login in the machine 
so we can check the ip address and the ip address of this machine is 192.168.1.135 now we can log in from the mobax term as well so let me do ssh there ssh vikas nehra at the rate 192.168.1.135 so you can see that it is asking us for the password and here we go let me check the details by running cat etc os release command and here you can see that it is running on ubuntu 20.04 and in order to check the details of the hardware we can execute sudo dmi decode hyphen t1 and we will mention the password for vikas nara user and there you can see that it is a virtual machine running on red hat with the help of kvm now in case if you don't want to use this machine or if you want to remove it you can shut it off so let me execute init 0 there so this will power off the machine you can see that the machine is now powered off and we can go back to virtual machines and in order to delete the machine we will click here on three dots and we will click on delete and we can click here on the delete button so this is the path where the virtual machine is installed or the kvm is installed it is there in slash where slash lib slash libvirt slash images now in case if you want to clone this machine you can click here on three dots and you can click on clone and here you can define the name for the clone and you can click here on clone option so it will help you in cloning the machine and it will hardly take two to three minutes in cloning you can see that the clone is ready and we can click on this clone and we can click on run to start this clone so you can clone n number of machines here depending on the space available in the root file system of the host operating system now i will show you how can you import the virtual machine you can directly click here on the import vm button and here you can mention the name so let me mention the name as ubuntu 20 now in the disk image we can define the path of the iso image so let me mention slash tmp slash ubuntu iso after that we can select the operating system that is ubuntu 20.04 we can define the memory 4 gb and we can click on import so it will import the virtual machine and we can click here and we can follow the same procedure that we have followed earlier so in this way either we can use the import vm option or we can use the create vm option to create the virtual machine now let me power it off and let me go back to virtual machines and let me show you how to remove these virtual machines so i'm going to remove the ubuntu clone first so i will click on three dots and after that i will click on delete button so this is gone now i will remove the first one again i will click on delete and this is also gone this is still running so we have to first power it off i will click here on force set down so you can see that this is now in power of state and we can remove this one as well so in this way we can easily install and manage the kernel based virtual machines in rhl 8 and in CentOS 8 based machines and it is very easier for the administrators to manage the KVMs with the help of these operating systems because in previous versions everything that we do in order to install or manage the KVMs that we do with the help of the command line interface only and here we have the flexibility to do it with the help of the cockpit as well as we can use the commands as well if we want so guys that's it from my side for this session I hope you would have enjoyed the session if you like it then do share it with your friends and colleagues and give a like to this video and if you are new on this channel then please subscribe us and turn on the bell notification i'll see you in the next one till then bye bye jai hind vande mataram take care